Um, so stage one is the um, audit stage. Um, this is really your information gathering. Um, it's your discovery phase where there are a number of elements that we look at to try to find out the information uh, that we might need in a crisis. Um, and really this is trying to be proactive. This is trying to see uh, in advance uh, what information we would need on the day. Um, and again, this will ultimately improve uh, speed and efficiency uh, when we need it most. Um, so if we look at this slide in a bit more detail, we have these, uh, these, these different groups that we might look at. So um, key audiences, um, and a lot of you selected that um, you would look at key audiences as prep, um, and certainly that's correct. Um, sort of who would you would need to communicate with in a crisis um, that may um, quite simply include, um, for example, your local newspaper, for example, but it will also include other stakeholders, including um, people who do um, visit your organization, um, your own staff, um, your own senior leadership and donors. Um, so having these people mapped out in advance and knowing what kind of information they will need, what kind of communication they will require um, is really, really important. Um, there is uh, looking at what, what crisis materials may exist. Um, I'll talk in more detail about those materials, but it may be that your organization already has some of these in place um, and it's important to know what they are. Um, listening, um, and by listening, what we mean here is um, sort of monitoring and the ability to find information um, when, when there is a life crisis. Um, sometimes this can be as simple as um, how you would monitor um, sort of uh, Google News uh, for coverage. It can be that simple, um, all the way up to more sophisticated tools, which may or may not be appropriate. Um, channels and partners um, will be sort of how we communicate. So I think all organizations have a number of ways of directly communicating with their audiences. That might be your own website, uh, email channels, um, newsletters, um, and again, understanding what channels we have, what opportunities and options we have to communicate is going to be very important when we then have to communicate. Um, and also the crisis team, we'll talk a bit about um, what we consider to be uh, a crisis team, who should be in that. Again, it depends organization to organization, um, but really taking the opportunity to take stock and think who might be involved um, in a crisis um, is really important here before we um, launch into, into everything else. Um, the creation phase is, um, is then leading off this. So what materials do we have, what don't we have, and what do we need? And here you can see we have our three columns um, of different collateral we might look to need. Um, this is, this is, these are quite practical assets. Um, so firstly, scenarios. Um, this is something that we can often do um, up front, um, envisage what kind of issues we are likely to face. Um, we've already talked about a few here in terms of uh, the implications of COVID, potentially closures, um, potentially uh, funding issues, um, but there will be other issues that may impact organizations. These may be things that have come uh, previously and you already know about. And in the audit phase, if you have um, sat down and spoken with senior leadership, often that phase you will understand what has happened before. Um, issues tend to repeat themselves um, and it can be very important to understand that historical context to feed into your uh, preparation. So scenario planning is important and we can often um, think in advance about what is likely to, um, likely to occur. Then uh, messaging. So what would our messaging be um, on these different scenarios? What would we say? And I think, for example, if we take the, um, the, the sort of heritage and colonialism issue, um, this is somewhere where preparing in advance what we would say on that issue um, is, is incredibly important. Um, and it may be that um, you, in the audit phase, have understood where your potential risk areas are there. You know, what exposure does your organization have to this topic or, or indeed does it not? Um, so messaging is something that can be produced in advance. Um, for each scenario, you may have um, just a very short Q&A on, you know, what likely questions might you be asked about these scenarios um, and how might you go about answering that. Um, and these are things that we would normally do um, and prep. Um, it doesn't mean that you write it and you never change it or you send it out verbatim necessarily, but it means you have it and you're able to revisit it 
as and when you need later on. Um, and then, and then content, um, again, these are areas such as statements, potential um, statements um, to different audiences. Um, maybe it's internal communications, um, a draft email, for example, that we could send um, to our own stakeholders in the case of an issue. Um, we've got media listed here and social media. Um, and this is where we can have draft statements against those scenarios written up and ready to go. Um, we have got a specific section later on social media, but again, having those responses ready to go um, really means that you are, uh, are able to engage quickly. Um, on the activate side of things here that we've just uh, moved on to, um, this is where you actually put this into place. Um, so it is about um, creating playbooks and protocols. So knowing how you react to a crisis. Um, at a simple level, this is about defining what crisis means to you and when you will be involved. Um, you also need to know who's involved and what they would do in a crisis. Um, so again, it depends on the organization. Um, but uh, for example, you do need to know who's responsible for social media. Um, who would update the website, for example, you know, whose job is that to make sure that if you are closed, that information is relayed online. So knowing who's responsible is important. Um, and again, a lot of people here, I think, I think people tend to think from a communications point of view, but often a lot of it is operational. Um, so people who will be involved will include, um, you know, potentially um, groundskeeping staff, um, people on the sort of security side, who may or may not be involved depending on the type of issue um, that is in play. Um, stage four um, is rehearse. Um, this is where, again, this can take a lot of time and it's one where um, big organizations might have more time for this and more resources than small ones. Um, but put simply, practice makes perfect. Um, if you are able to bring together the team that would respond to a crisis, um, on a semi-regular basis, um, that is an opportunity for you to think about those scenarios you've drawn up and how you'll respond, um, who is responsible, and make sure that people are aware of what their role is in a crisis. Um, one very practical thing people can do is, is media training. Um, it is you know, just giving people, um, particularly your senior leadership, who might be your spokesperson, um, training on topics in advance. So practicing interviews even before they've got one set up on a topic we think might be particularly sensitive. Um, and if anyone was listening to the Today Programme this morning on Radio 4 at about a quarter to seven, you might have heard Tristram Hunt, um, the director at the VNA, um, talking about um, the topic of um, giving back artifacts um, and their links to the East India Company. Um, it's a very interesting interview. It's obviously a very challenging topic for the VNA and many other heritage organizations. Um, I will put a link into the chat for that interview. But if you listen to that, you can hear it's obviously well rehearsed and well drilled. Um, and that's the value. If you've said something once, you'll be much better placed the next time to say it again. Um, and then update and repeat. So quite simply, you know, why do we update and repeat? Well, it's to, to keep it relevant, to keep it sharp. Um, and it's the same as you would train for absolutely anything. Um, when might you do it? Well, it would be sort of every one to two years, um, most likely, or under a number of circumstances. So if you've had a significant change of leadership, um, if you've had a significant change in the person who is managing or responsible for comms and PR, um, potentially if there's been another significant issue that you haven't prepared for before, um, or just following a crisis, taking learnings um, and making sure that anything that didn't work well the first time you've learned from and applied. 